Hey, dude, look who's here. It's my friend Izzy, the eye jammer. She just stopped by for a visit. Whoa, I never met a real eye jammer before. Hey, dude, great to meet you. I need to split some cells in the tissue culture room, but I thought you and Izzy could chat. Maybe she could tell you a bit about her project. Awesome! So, what was your eye gem project? We tried to engineer a bacterial arsenic detector. A what? A bacterial cell that could tell us when arsenic is present in the water. See, arsenic contamination in drinking water is a big problem for people living in Bangladesh and West Bengal. And since there is no easy way to know if arsenic is in the water, people there have been drinking contaminated water and getting sick. So we wanted to engineer a biological system that people can use to test their water for arsenic. I had no idea this was such a problem. What a great project to work on. How does your system work? Well, our goal, or the system specification as engineers call it, was to have people mix a little bit of their drinking water with the culture of bacteria and know that there's arsenic contamination if the liquid changes color. Awesome! But how did you get a bacteria to do that? I'm still trying to figure out how to make my bacteria balloon work. Well, like all engineers, we use abstraction to help us. Let's take a look. We knew we needed to build a system that could take us input arsenic and produce us output a change in the color. So first, we compiled our system into devices. We needed one device that could detect arsenic and produce a signal. We called this our arsenic sensor and gave it a part number, BBAJ33201. And we needed a second device that could produce a color when you get the signal from our arsenic sensor that there's arsenic around. We called this color reporter BBAJ33202. I don't get it. Why are you using two devices? Wouldn't it be easier to make just one arsenic in and color out? Well, you could do it that way. But then the only thing that the device could be used for is to report on arsenic contamination with color. By splitting the system into two devices, a sensor and a reporter, we hope future iGEM teams can use one or the other for new projects. How? Well, a team could connect the arsenic sensor device to a different reporter device that, say, produces light instead of color. Or a team could build a new system that detects, say, mercury contamination and then produces a color as a response. Yep. We design our system so that the people can more easily reuse and build on our work. Oh, I get it. Maybe I could connect your arsenic sensor device to my balloon-making device. Exactly. But shouldn't I know a little more about how the arsenic sensor works before I just hook it up to the balloon-making device? Sally got kind of upset last time. I didn't stop the balloons from growing and growing. That's why we enter both devices into the Registry of Standard Biological Parts. We also documented our project online at the iGEM Wiki. The goal is that eventually, for each part and device in the registry, there will be a data sheet that summarizes all the relevant information about a device, so that you know how to use it in a higher level system, like the arsenic detector. You mean just like this old data sheet I found for this 7404 hex inverter chip? Yep, but I'm afraid there's still a lot of work to do before all the parts and devices in the registry have data sheets. Great! Lots of work to go do. Let's get started.